president. When we give up on truth, we concede power to those with the wealth and charisma to create spectacle in its place. Joining me now is Timothy Snyder, noted history professor at Yale University and author of On Tyranny, 20 Lessons from the 20th Century. Thank you so much for being with us. Um, I've been arguing, uh, but without your academic credentials at all, that what we were seeing in the Capitol, the T-shirts, the anti-Semitism, the white separatism, as toxic as that is, is partly the result of this denial of truth, denial of the reality. Um, you've connected the two, the denial of truth to fascism. Well, a, a basic element of fascism is that you take the messiness of everyday life, the complicatedness of everyday life, and you replace it with a few or maybe just one big, simple claim. A, a, a big lie, which is the foundation of a story that explains everything. A big lie, which is so false that it divides the believers from the non-believers. And a big lie, which is about something so important that if you believe in it, then of course you, you feel compelled towards action or towards violent action. This is part of the story of the collapse of democracy in the first part of the 20th century, and I'm afraid it's part of our story now, too. What are the sources of this in our society? that make so many people vulnerable to their own reality. Yeah, I mean, you, you suggested already a historical source, which is that th there is a falsehood deep within the way a lot of Americans, especially white Americans, think about history. We, we don't think enough about, or we think wrongly about, or we deny how undemocratic our society has often been towards African Americans in particular. When we don't recognize that part of our history, then we have a tendency to think, well, only people like us should be represented, or as the white supremacists in the Capitol said, this is our house. It doesn't belong to the voters, to all Americans. It only belongs to us. In the last decade or so, and there's been another source, which is social media. Social media has killed local news, which once helped people keep people together by giving them common sets of facts about what matter to them. And social media draws us towards the things that get us excited, towards the things that we already believe. So Mr. Trump has been a kind of master of both of those traditions. He's been a master of, of telling his people that they're the only good Americans, and he's been a master of using social media um, to arouse people and to treat others as enemies. How fragile is our democracy after four years, at least, of lies being told from the Oval Office, from the podium in the White House, from the State Department, places where we always expected at least fact-based reporting, from the intelligence leaders? How mm -hmm. fragile are we now? I mean, I, I think if we're honest about it, we recognize that democracy is always fragile. I mean, democracies usually come apart. If we're honest about it, we, 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 in more self-critical, we realize that there's nothing magical about America. There's nothing exceptional about America. If we want democracy, then we have to decide that we stand for democracy. And, and as you've been saying all along, if we, if we want to have a democracy into the future, then we have to say we care about factuality. We care about truth. We care about supporting the press, especially the local press and the courageous people who make it their calling to, to bring us the truth. If our democracy is fragile now, then it was also fragile, let's be honest, four years ago. We're, we're seeing Mr. Trump hasten us to the culmination of a lot of problems that we've already had. This is horrible. It's horrible to watch a scene in which our capital um, is, is invaded and in which people's lives were at risk. This could have been much worse. But we can also see this as an opportunity, as an opportunity to understand ourselves better, our history better, and to take some, some clear steps to try to move ourselves towards being a better democracy. And how much responsibility do others in the Republican Party and the Senate have who are denying the reality? even denying the reality of the Biden victory. They bear a huge amount of responsibility. I mean, we could take it as given that Mr. Trump was going to lie and tell a big lie. In fact, he was saying all summer and all fall that whatever the results were, he was going to claim victory. So he was basically predicting his own lie. We could count on that. I, I, you're, you're very much right. I mean, the problem is that the vast majority of congressional 
Republicans went along with the story in one way or another. They gave it oxygen in November and December. And thanks to that, above all, tens of millions of Americans came to believe it. If Republicans had said in November, okay, we lost the election, time to move on, the big lie would never have gotten off the ground. And, and this, this, by the way, suggests a simple solution. If Republicans want to get beyond Trumpism, they can do something which is going to be painful for a moment, which is going to feel good in the long run, which is just tell the simple truth about the election. Timothy Snyder, Professor, thank you so very much, author of On Tyranny. Thanks for being with us.